Hello, and welcome to A Gross of Physics. Today is day 61, where we will begin our discussion of momentum. Now, momentum is a very difficult concept to grasp because it's often confused with inertia. And inertia, remember, was the tendency of an object to resist its change in motion. The inertia of an object is based on its mass. Now, momentum is not only based on the mass of an object, but also how, um, how fast it's moving. Now, momentum is defined as how difficult it is to stop an object. It's a definition that is subjective to some degree. Of course, we're going to use mathematics and we're going to have a quantitative approach to it. But right now, qualitatively, if we think about the object's motion and whether or not it would be easy for us to stop an object, that would mean it has low momentum. If it's hard to stop that object, it would have a lot of momentum or a high value for momentum. Now, of course, momentum is going to have a value. It's going to have a unit. But today, I'd like to just start with thinking about objects that might be um, difficult to stop. Now, if we have an object that is very small and it's traveling at a high rate of speed, that would prove to be difficult to stop. Now, of course, difficulty isn't a specific or precise term. So it is, in this case, subjective. And of course, we'll have a value that we can compare different momentums between objects. But if I were thinking about a small object, let's say even like a proton, a tiny little object, and it was traveling in a particle accelerator, well, that's going to be very difficult to stop if we put an object in front of it. In fact, it would cause many objects that are much greater than it, or even you know the same size like a, like a neutron or similar size, to actually um, break apart. So in that case, a very small object traveling at a high rate of speed, close to the speed of light, which is the maximum value we can have, would have um, a high amount of momentum, and it would be difficult for other objects to stop. Now, of course, if it was hitting a huge object like, like the Earth, let's say, it wouldn't be as difficult for the Earth to stop it. But if it's hitting another subatomic particle, it would have a lot of momentum compared to that subatomic particle. On the other hand, we might have a large object in the macroscopic world, such as a train. A train can be traveling even at a small rate of speed, 5 or 10 miles per hour, but if you stand in front of it, you're not going to be able to stop it. In fact, if there was a car in the, in the tracks, that would have difficulty stopping it. So the fact that the train, although traveling at a small speed, has a high mass, that would cause it to have great momentum. On the other hand, you could have an object um, that is in, of medium size, let's say a bowling ball, and I roll that down the lane. Well, if you're trying to stop that with your leg, you're going to have a lot of difficulty doing so. So um, it's all relative to the objects involved with the collisions. Now, on the other hand, we can have objects that are easier to stop. And typically, we could have um, objects that might be made of foam. Um, a Nerf ball might be diff uh, easy to stop. A ping pong ball would be easier to stop. Now, if I strike a ping pong ball at a high rate of speed and it hits my arm, I may uh, say that that's not very easy to stop. In fact, I'm going to have a bruise on my arm. So, like I said, the factors that involve momentum are not only the mass, but how fast it's moving. Now, momentum is a vector, so it's not really the mass that matters, but the velocity. So, momentum is going to have direction. And in fact, that's going to play a major role when we're talking about um, things like conservation of momentum when objects collide. In fact, the direction of the objects is going to, going to matter um, immensely when we calculate for conservation of momentum. For now, though, we're going to have an equation for momentum. And the equation is P equals MV. And it's a lowercase p. Uppercase p is going to be reserved mostly for power. But for now, lowercase p equals mv is our equation. Now, the m is mass, measured in kilograms. The v is velocity, measured in meters per second. So if we combine the kilograms and the meters per second, we end up with a unit of kilogram meter over second. Now, that looks strikingly similar to the unit for acceleration, which is or even um, force. Newton's uh, is kilogram meter over second squared. 
So if we look at kilogram meter over second, we have to remember that that's not a force, it's a momentum. And in fact, it's a measure of how difficult it is to stop an object. So subjectively, um, that can change depending upon the person's point of view, but quantitatively, if we calculate MV, we can compare different values for momentum. And what I'd like to do at this point is actually calculate a couple of values for momentum and compare the values and discuss how easy or difficult it is to stop those objects. So let's take out the whiteboard now and we'll do some practice problems. Momentum is merely P equals MV. So the momentum, which is a lowercase p, is equal to the mass in kilograms and the velocity in meters per second. And that's going to yield kilograms times meter over seconds. And that does not have a simplified version. We're just going to use kilogram meter over second to represent the momentum. Now, if we have a train and it's traveling at two meters per second, so V is two, it has a mass of 3,000 kilograms. The momentum of the train is simply 3,000 times two. And that would be 6,000 kilogram meter over second. That's the momentum. If we had a projectile fired from a revolver, we have information here where its mass is 200 grams and its speed is 735 feet per second. So that's listed in the English units. What we need, though, is metric, so we're going to have to convert the grams to kilograms. So that's going to be 0 0.2 kilograms, three places, one, two, three. And then the feet are going to need to be converted to meters. So let's look at that. All right, the feet has to be converted to meters. So 735 feet, 3.28 feet is one meter. So the feet will cancel, and if we do 735, 735 divided by 3.28, I have 224.1 meters, and then that's going to be per second. The seconds are fine. Now, in order to find the momentum, I'm merely going to do P equals MV. The mass is 0 0.2, so 0 0.2 kilograms. The velocity was 224.1 meters per second. And when I multiply the two, I end up with 44.82 kilogram meter per second. Now, the train has a momentum of 6,000. The bullet has a projectile, or the projectile has a momentum of about 45. However, both are going to cause quite a bit of damage when they, uh, if they were to hit into you. So it's important to realize that in, in these cases, the relative numbers don't necessarily tell you what the effect of that uh, impact is going to be. We're going to need a new term to help us determine how the change in momentum will affect objects.